fuck's sake, JR. He's got like four Moscow mules up here already. I like to say, don't worry about the mules. They're right here. Just load the wagon. I'm just, uh, I'm glad somebody showed up. I was nervous that nobody was going to be here and that I was going to be all embarrassed. So thank you for coming. It occurred to me I've never done anything where I was on stage alone for this long, so this could be terrible. I've done that a few times. It's not fun. You get to know everybody by name. Hey, Joe, was that a funny joke? Uh, I mentioned on the way out here, there's a lot of things we can talk about. One of, the, one of my most memorable memories of you was down in uh, Tampa when uh, I would come down there and help Dusty with, and the guys with TV at, on, uh, on, on that main drag there. What's that, what's that street? Dale Mabry. Dale Mabry, yeah. And uh, John, we had high hopes for John. Uh, WWE had high hopes for John as well. And we, he had, remember that issue you had with Regal? Yeah, I remember TV? very well. I love that. Yeah. And boy, that really, you were ready for that moment because it was a moment that you needed to capitalize on because everybody had endorsed you being, a, hey, this guy's a keeper, and you showed everybody you were the keeper that we thought. Yeah, I remember, uh, I remember that match clearly. That was the last match and the last ever episode of FCW television. I mean, it's loud in here. Uh, and you and Dusty were on commentary, which was very cool for me. Uh, first time you've ever commentated one of my matches. And I remember that whole, uh, that whole program really well because it was just me uh, collaborating with Dusty, Regal, and it was a, like a year-long storyline. It was really, really simple. It was kind of a, uh, kind of a young lion, old lion, uh, mentor, student thing. Really, really simple. He beats the shit out of me. Then I stew about it for like a year. Keep calling him out, calling him out, calling him out. He holds it off, holds it off. And uh, then I beat the shit out of him. Very, very simple. And the end of the match wasn't supposed to be the end of the match. Like, I put his head in the turnbuckle and kneed him so hard it ripped his ear off and his ear started bleeding. So, that, so this was all, uh, it actually kind of worked out beautifully for the story. So his ear was bleeding and half hanging off and I'm beating the shit out of him and the trainer jumps in and they stop it in WWE for even the slightest bit of blood. So they're putting on the, the rubber gloves and they're trying to stop the match and I'm fucking fuming because I had built it up in my head this match I, like, I believed, and my, all my best matches, I work myself into believing that I truly hate this motherfucker. Like, if I, that night when I was wrestling William Regal, I wanted to kill him. And, and I was there mentally. So, and I'm, this is the biggest match of my life, and this doctor's jumping in for just a tiny little bit of bitch blood, and I was pissed. I'm, like, pacing back and forth. I'm like, what the hell? Regal just jumps out of the trainer's arms, fucking gloms me. We somehow... Somehow get to a finish, they like shoot, ran all the guys to the back, I need him in the face. And it kind of worked out beautifully for the story because I wanted to get that win over him so bad for like a year and that I never got a chance to because the match got stopped, but I still got to kill him. So, so it, it was pretty cool, uh, it was a pretty cool ending to that whole thing. Significant to say it was a uh, big time moment in your evolution because I just think a lot more people started paying attention to your work because Regal sang your praises, Dusty sang your praises, I tried to chime in, and those heard us talk so much, they started paying attention. But the great thing, you, you deserve the credit because you saw the ball was kind of bounced into your court, and you picked it up, you ran with it because these damn opportunities don't come along. Yeah, William Regal was uh, pretty uh, key in uh, making sure that I didn't get screwed up there uh, down in FCW. That whole run in Tampa, at the time, we were so, like, uh, the crew that I hung out with, like me, Seth, Juice Robinson, uh, Corey Graves, we were so, like, fuck everybody, like, almost like anti-office, because we felt like outcasts down there in FCW. It's not like it is today. We felt like we were on our own island, nobody was paying attention to us, and we were putting on amazing shows and creating on our own buzz. So we were, like... We had a real uh, attitude, but the thing is, that it's stressful because you're always wondering, like, if you're ne if you never get called up. So, uh, you know, and you're make making a little money, but you know, pretty much peanuts compared to what you will 
hopefully make. So you're like, the stress of not being calls up kind of ruins the experience. But looking back now, I'm really proud of like my whole body of work there. And looking back now, I'm like, that was the greatest, funnest time. Just, you know, and uh, so yeah. What does it do to an athlete mentally to know you're still sitting down there? And now this is, the game's changed now because NXT is the third brand. It's not a developmental territory. It's not a territory for beginners, in essence, that make the television show. Those aren't beginners. They're, they're, they're experienced, skilled talents. But sitting there as an athlete, how heavy does it play on your mind to wonder, do you put time limits on it? You say, if I'm not called up in six months, I'm going to do something else. Or how do you process all that information while you sit and wait? I was, uh, I was pretty confident that uh, something was going to happen. You know, they were always, uh, I always had a feeling that it was going to work out. It's just, uh, so, I was pretty confident, but, you know, you're down there for a long time. But also, I was just trying to make the most of the opportunity. I feel like I got better during that period of time. When I got signed with WWE, I wasn't in a very, uh, wasn't in a very good place in life, you know, mentally or anything like that. So I was like, all right, this is like a gift from the universe. This is an opportunity I have to make the most of this. So I went down there and I, I was, I put in 100% effort in training, getting better, like, and uh, to trying to develop and make this WWE thing work. It's funny because everybody, uh, when I first was going down there, a lot of people were like, because you hear people talk shit. And everybody's like, okay, if he can't bleed and swear and do all that shit, he's never gonna make it in WWE where he has to clean up his act. Funnily enough, I cleaned it up too much. Looking back, it's funny. So, like, I became so child friendly that it was ridiculous. But, but I figured it out, and uh, it turned out to be a good run. What does it do to an athlete mentally to know you're still sitting down there? And now, this is, the game's changed now because NXT is the third brand. It's not a developmental territory. It's not a territory for beginners, in essence that make the television show, those aren't beginners. They're, they're, they're experienced, skilled talents. But sitting there as an athlete, how heavy does it play on your mind to wonder, do you put time limits on it? You say, if I'm not called up in six months, I'm gonna do something else, or how do you process all that information while you sit and wait? I was, uh, I was pretty confident that uh, something was gonna happen. You know, they were always, uh, I always had a feeling that it was going to work out. It's just, uh, so, I was pretty confident, but, you know, you're down there for a long time. But also, I was just trying to make the most of the opportunity. I feel like I got better during that period of time. When I got signed with WWE, I wasn't in a very, uh, wasn't in a very good place in life, you know, mentally or anything like that. So I was like, all right, this is like a gift from the universe. This is an opportunity I have to make the most of this. So I went down there and I, I was, I put in 100% effort in training, getting better, like, and uh, to trying to develop and make this WWE thing work. It's funny because everybody, uh, when I first was going down there, a lot of people were like, because you hear people talk shit. And everybody's like, okay, if he can't bleed and swear and do all that shit, he's never gonna make it in WWE where he has to clean up his act. Funnily enough, I cleaned it up too much. Looking back, it's funny. So, like, I became so child friendly that it was ridiculous. But, but I figured it out, and uh, it turned out to be a good run.